будет отличный усадок. Why is there not a single country that can stop Russia's hypersonic missiles? President Vladimir Putin has stated that Russia is the only country in the world capable of deploying hypersonic weapons, placing it ahead of its long-standing rival, the United States, for the first time in modern history. Today, Russia is no longer falling behind. They are leading the world in the development of an entirely new class of weapons. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union was always behind in atomic bombs, strategic bombers, and intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now, the situation has reversed. It is the United States that must catch up with Russia. Just how powerful are Russia's hypersonic weapons? Keep your eyes on the story. In the history of warfare, speed has always been the deciding factor between the conqueror and the conquered. However, what we are witnessing today is not merely an evolution, but a revolution in military physics. When we talk about the speed of sound, Mach 1, we are speaking of the past. When we mention hypersonic speeds, Mach 5 and above, or five times the speed of sound, we begin touching the limits of modern technology. But the Russian Federation has not stopped at those limits. It has gone far beyond them, creating a category of power never seen before. Russian leaders have repeatedly emphasized the country's unique position in modern history. This is not empty rhetoric. While Western nations are still grappling with concepts and prototypes, Russia has already placed its doomsday weapons into active combat service. These weapons move so fast that they seem to defy the laws of physics and render the world's most advanced air defense systems obsolete in an instant. Two names that now haunt the nightmares of Western strategists are Avangard and Kinzhal. At the pinnacle of this technological pyramid sits the Avangard. It is not merely a missile, it is a man-made meteor. Avangard is an intercontinental launch system equipped with a hypersonic glide vehicle. Its claimed capabilities sound like science fiction, yet they are a frightening reality. It can streak through the atmosphere at 20 to 27 times the speed of sound. At speeds of up to 24,696 kilometers per hour, Avangard can strike any point on Earth in under an hour. From Moscow to Washington, London, or Paris is only a matter of minutes. However, speed is not Avangard's only trump card. The true genius of the system lies in its maneuverability. Unlike conventional ballistic missiles that follow a predictable parabolic trajectory, Avangard dances along the edge of the atmosphere. It can change direction and altitude drastically as it glides toward its target. For enemy defense systems, tracking Avangard is like trying to catch a bolt of lightning with bare hands. It is enveloped in a plasma cloud caused by extreme air friction, which also absorbs radio waves, making it even harder to detect accurately until it is far too late. It is an ultimate penetration weapon designed to neutralize any missile shield system, whether current or future. On the other hand, there is the Kinzhal, an air-launched ballistic missile carried by the legendary MiG-31 interceptor, itself specially modified for this mission. Kinzhal accelerates to Mach 10 with a range of more than 2,000 kilometers. Its flexibility is remarkable. It can carry conventional warheads to destroy aircraft carriers or command bunkers, or nuclear warheads for strategic strikes. The Russian military proudly claims that no naval vessel or land facility is safe from the reach of this dagger. Ironically, the West is not blind to this threat. Their advanced radar systems, such as the AN or TPY-2, the backbone of THAAD, or the SPY-6 radar integrated into the US Navy's Aegis system, are indeed designed to detect long-range threats. They even deploy space-based assets like the Space-Based Infrared System and the Hypersonic and Ballistic Tracking Space Sensor for global monitoring. 
Yet this is where the tragedy of Western defense lies. They have sharp eyes, but lack sufficiently fast hands. Detection alone is not enough. Seeing death approach at 7 kilometers per second does not save you if there is not a single interceptor missile in NATO inventory capable of catching, let alone destroying, the wild maneuvers of Russia's hypersonic weapons. The theories and specifications written on paper have been transformed into a terrifying display of power in the field. In November 2025, the Russian armed forces set a new record that sent shockwaves through NATO headquarters. Operational data shows an unprecedented intensity in the use of Kinzhal hypersonic missiles. In just one month, 27 high-precision strikes were launched against critical military infrastructure across Ukraine. Russia did not use these expensive weapons indiscriminately. The Kinzhal was employed as a high-destructive surgical needle, aimed specifically at the most vital strategic targets. Thermal and hydroelectric power plants that supported Ukraine's war industry were disabled. Even more impressive, the missile was used to break open highly fortified locations, such as underground command bunkers previously considered immune to conventional air attacks. The Kinzhal's kinetic speed on impact is so great that it can penetrate thick reinforced concrete even before its warhead detonates. While premium targets were destroyed by hypersonics, Russia applied an intelligent saturation strategy for less critical targets using a massive drone fleet. In the same month of November, the skies over Ukraine were filled with 5,456 attack drones, including the Garand 2, Garand 3, and the newest Gerbera models. Although this figure is slightly below the record set in July 2025, the consistent launch rate of over 5,000 units per month since mid-year indicates one alarming reality. Russia's military industrial production capacity is surging. This is a war of attrition in which Russia appears to have an almost inexhaustible supply of munitions. Escalation was also evident in the use of ballistic missiles. A total of 203 missiles of various types were launched in November, with nearly half of all attacks involving ballistic or aeroballistic weapons. This sharp increase from October reflects a doctrinal shift toward faster, harder to intercept strikes. The result? Reports from the field confirm the collapse of Ukraine's air defense effectiveness. Western flagship systems such as the US-made Patriot Pac-3 and the European SAMP-T proved overwhelmed. They failed to reliably intercept Russian missiles, demonstrating that air defense technologies from the 1990s and 2000s are no longer adequate against modern threats from the East. Russia has demonstrated that with the avant-garde and Kinzhal, it holds the key to strategic dominance for the coming decades. Let's see how the United States responds to this new hypersonic era. That's all for today, and thanks for watching. Thank you.